Sunday afternoon. And what have you been doing? A walk in the park, a little football, sitting on the couch watching telly, or maybe a Barbie in the backyard. And just think, you could have been doing some art, by which we mean to suggest, and we're going to go on suggesting for the next few weeks, that an art gallery is a fantastic place to go to on a Sunday afternoon. You can come to them with us for art galleries. Checking out pictures, whether you like them or not, is relaxing and stimulating at the same time. And here in Granada land, we have our share of fabulous art galleries. Over the next four weeks, we're going to show you the works from Preston, from Kendall, from Liverpool and from Salford. landmark millennium project, an architectural flagship, 100 million pounds of it. This is the Lowry. Named after the city's most famous artistic son, it's the Sydney Opera House for Salford, and it takes the concept of the art centre to a new level. Colour-coded psychedelic oranges and purples, it's a vast complex of theatres, walkways, restaurants, shops, cafes, and the reason we're visiting, art galleries. The Lowry Gallery is much more than just a gallery for the Lowrys. Architecture is more interesting, and I think by having a variety of types of space, sizes of space, heights of space, different methods of lighting, we're providing the flexibility that is often talked about or the requirement for galleries. He is implicated, it's true. Um, I think there, is, there are certain elements in Lowry's industrial landscapes which may be conformed to some people's idea of the cliché northern landscape. However, I think it's, uh, it's got in the way of people evaluating his work properly. And the pictures in this room are of a different key altogether. When... I don't see any mills and... No. No, what, what happened? No. Well, Larry stopped painting them when they started to close down, the terrace streets started to disappear, when the whole landscape in the 50s and 60s changed radically in the north. He changed. He was attracted to them initially, and when they disappeared, he felt it wasn't right to perpetuate that myth, because that wasn't what he was about, fundamentally. I quote from the walls, and I do love the way you put statements on walls, I feel more strongly about these people than I ever did about the industrial scene. That seems to be, it's a new message for me about Lowry. Is it the message you wanted to get out? Yes, it is, because I think the pictures in this room have come as a surprise to people. They didn't realize that Lowry concentrated from the 50s, 60s onwards on single figures, on the grotesque, the odd, the bizarre. There are elements in those early landscapes, but very hard to detect. And once he'd um, divorced the figures from the landscape, they came through. Showing Larry is a gift if you are dedicated to introducing people to art and breaking down those barriers, because Larry doesn't have those barriers that a lot of modern artists have for people. So they come and they, they already have an open mind because they feel that they're going to enjoy what they see. And then they come in to see the later Larry works, the strange, weird drawings that he does at the very end of his life. And they take that on board just as easily. So I, I think it's, it's part and parcel and people don't have those barriers. I have never thought of Lowry as a modern artist. Should I think of Lowry as a modern artist? I would hope you, you would. And that's one of the things that we've been trying to establish through these galleries and through this particular exhibition. In this room, you will see pictures of individual figures, very isolated, lonely. It's about non-communication between individuals and that is a very 20th century concern that you see in uh, writers like Samuel Beckett, Harold Pinter, in other artists, uh, Otto Dix, for example, in Germany. He is part of a modern European mindset. But basically, the Lowry is, although it's called the Lowry, is a lot more than L.S. Lowry. We need to attract people from far and wide for a whole range of reasons and sort of reflect contemporary culture. And in so doing, we get people to think about L.S. Lowry differently, so it's a bit of a circle. This is called undies. The Lowry does have to strike a very difficult balance between the international, this is an international building, and the local. In part two, how they do it, and how they do it extremely well. 
as well as some modern art like this, we have the finest painter of the new Manchester and the finest photographer of the old Salford. Don't go away. Welcome back to the works. And if I can use this word on an early Sunday evening, all art galleries should be a little bit sexy. And here's my sexy contribution for this early Sunday evening. Look at the fabulous, shapely, sinuous Mancunian Way by Liam Spencer. There's a famous expression, it's grim up north. Mm. Your paintings are about the north and they are so ungrim, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the North isn't grim at all? Um, I think it, you know it, it has its moments. I mean, I've I have actually been accused of trying to make Manchester look like Venice or something because of the the rich colours and, and the sunlight. And uh, I think I am drawn to those sort of sunny evenings, you know, when when the sun's low and you get strong light and shade, and and all this red brick that surrounds us everywhere in Manchester becomes very vivid. But there are paintings in the exhibition which are, you know, bucketing it down with, with rain at night and there's a painting of Salford which is actually all, all in greys. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not such a selective image. I think people's image of Manchester is probably testament to the power of Lowry's images to some extent. People do still think of Manchester and Salford as being very grey and very wet and then they're no longer particularly you know, grim and grey cities, you know, the clean air act sort of put paid to a lot of that years ago, all the chimneys have gone, all that smog's gone. You know, we do get clear blue skies in Manchester, not all the time, admittedly. Um, and perhaps, maybe it's in my nature to perhaps produce images that are a bit more celebratory, you know, about enjoying being in a city like Manchester rather than it being a kind of a grim, a grim outlook on it. So perhaps I've been drawn to those, um, you know, those, those sort of days, really. Would you imagine painting the Lowry? I've done that already, Have actually. You? <laughs> yeah. Where is it? In the studio. The, the Lowry at night on a very fine summer's evening when it, during the mini heat wave that we had when it first opened. In terms of what a gallery can do for an artist, mm. this gallery, this new gallery at the Lowry, delivered completely, didn't it? It did for me. You sold all your paintings? Sold all the paintings and more importantly thousands of people have seen them. Um, I, I think usually you've got public galleries and you've got private galleries. The public galleries are where you hope to get exposure and you know you, you can be confident that lots of people see the work. That doesn't usually go hand in hand with selling work because they're entirely different animals. A commercial gallery might sell work on your behalf but quite exclusively you know perhaps only a, you know, a small trickle of people might, might see the images. Uh, in this instance, I've been lucky to get both. You know, so lots of people seeing the work and selling them as well. So it's been it's been perfect. I think often the higher the profile of the gallery, the less likely they are to sort of see what's going on down at the end of the the road sort of thing. You know, it's sort of it can be you can it's easy to be neglected in the in the time where you work. And so I'm pleased that the Lowry has made a definite sort of policy of, of devoting this one gallery to work being made in the region and I think you know there's an awful lot of artists now in this area but the infrastructure to support them is still lacking a little bit behind everything like this helps. The lady with exquisite taste who decided to invite Liam Spencer to exhibit is Emma Anderson. Emma's in charge of temporary exhibitions and has strong ideas on how the Lowry should use its gallery space. Basically, the Lowry is, although it's called the Lowry, is a lot more than L.S. Lowry. The Lowry has the theatres, and, and that instance is dealing with contemporary culture and to contemporary creativity. We need to attract people from far and wide for a whole range of reasons and sort of reflect contemporary culture. So, so hold on, we must reflect contemporary culture and also attract people, get yes, people in. Yes, yes. With the art. With the art. Okay. And in so doing, we get people to think about L.S. Lowry differently, so it's a bit of a circle. Shirley Baker's stunning photographs of Salford in the 60s created quite a stir when they were first published. Now the Lowry has invited her back. My photographs have always been about the ordinary and the everyday. 
people must use their imagination to see what's beyond the frame. Was photography really accepted as an art form to go on gallery walls when you began in the early 60s? I never considered it as, I never expected or thought of it as, as, as um, art. And I, I still have a problem <laughs> now with thinking of it as art. And no, no, the answer to your question is that um, it wasn't really, it was more for um, books and newspapers and magazines and so on, rather than the gallery wall. The Lowry commissioned Shirley and her camera to go back onto the streets of Salford and capture fresh images of the city as the new millennium dawned. Not surprisingly, she's noticed one or two changes. I think there's a lot more colour now than there was then. Things are brighter, clothes are brighter, probably from the influence of television, maybe. The kids look happier in the new images than the old images, but is that just our imagination? I think the difference now is that children are supervised because parents are afraid of, of leaving their children. You don't see children wandering on the streets on their own now. Um, and in general, um, you see children with, with, with an adult around and certainly watching. And the children seem to have more toys and bikes and you don't see any ragged children anymore. Um, so things have definitely changed in, in that respect. Isn't the tough thing though, your most moving photographs are of the children, both from before and from now. How do you get the children into art galleries, into places like this? Well, um, I've been wandering around the streets in Salford and every child knows about the Lowry and the parents know about the Lowry um, because they've obviously been taught in the schools of, about the Lowry and they're immensely proud of this building um, and already there's a, a, a sense of ownership even amongst the children because they've been here and they've taken part in activities here so um, people do know, know about it and um, they're proud of it. That's the best definition I've heard yet of why it's here this is, that's a real definition of regeneration, isn't it? I think it's so, in, yes. The confidence inside the kids. Yes, I think so, because that's, that's where it starts. What's great about galleries is people. Um, people looking at art, enjoying art, getting things from art, extending themselves because of art, because of the work of artists. That's why I think galleries at the moment are enjoying an unprecedented um, growth and, and flourishing. I think galleries help people discover themselves, discover parts of themselves they didn't know about. Um, and it's that sense of interest and excitement that I think it makes a gallery a very special place. That is the vision, and in a lesser way, the vision of this series. The bad news, Liam Spencer's paintings have just come down, but you can see some of his canvases at the Duke's Oak Gallery near Sandbach until the end of the month. And the good news, Shirley Baker's photographs go up here at the Lowry at the end of this month. The other news, we're back next week. From the works, good evening.